What's up YouTube, ODST General back again with another Operation Trebuchet news update. Um, so this is kind of unfortunate for me because I already more or less recorded this video, had it in the can, ready to go, uploaded, and then it was supposed to come out uh, like last week, and then the update for Optray got pushed, which included stuff for First Contact and the main mod. So... I basically decided to go back and just re-record the whole video because there was a few other things I kind of missed or hadn't really discussed, and so I want to go ahead and just cover those too. So I'm just re-recording this whole video. Um, at any rate, guys, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. So we had a kind of a dry spell there for several weeks, and that's why there was no videos, is because there would be like one thing a week, and it just, to me, doing one of these videos for like a single picture isn't really worth it so you know by the time we get to like three or four screenshots it's like maybe i'll do it but i wasn't really sure and then yeah huge dump of stuff so let's go ahead and talk about it so starting off with official mod stuff for operation trebuchet uh we have weapons the first thing we have weapons wise is the m247h that uh, jedi nick showed off of course we've seen this before previously um not a whole lot of progress has been made on this since we last spoke about it um, but basically this is going to be designed to be mounted onto the side of the Falcon. And so you guys can see the shield for it. You can see the weapon itself as well as the weapon on the mounting bracket. And, uh, presumably we might get a static version of this, I would assume, or some other version of this. that will get mounted to other stuff potentially. And you guys can see some of the uh, substance painter stuff that they're doing with it, messing with the materials and things of that nature. Then after that, we have the VK-78 Commando, which Hi has been working on. Uh, this thing is, you know, it's not my favorite Halo weapon, it, of course. We've talked about the VK-78 in the past, I think. And, you know, it's one of those things, it doesn't look the most Halo, but of course, a lot of that's going to be things like the texture and stuff are really going to help sell that this is a Halo weapon. And of course, you know, at the end of the day, regardless of the texture and stuff, uh, regardless of my personal opinion, it is a Halo weapon. It is from Halo Infinite. Whether or not it looks like the most Halo-looking, you know, UNSC-looking weapon out there, uh, doesn't really matter at that point because it is actually a Halo weapon. So um, we are going to be getting that into the game. Um, the model is actually already completed, and it has been passed along to uh, Thomas. A very, very basic version of it. A non-operational version has already been put in the game. And you can see uh, Hi just kind of messing around with some textures, which are not going to be the final version, of course. But uh, nonetheless, still very cool. Uh, definitely excited to see this thing actually getting added to the game just once again, just based off the fact that it's the first Halo Infinite content that we're getting for Operation Trebuchet. So that's exciting. Then that brings us over to a weapon that was actually added into the development build for Operation Trebuchet, which was the BR-37, which is basically a combination of the MA-37 assault rifle combined with the BR-85 from Halo 4 and Halo 5. And uh, kind of an atrocity, but at the same kind of neat. Obviously, this isn't strictly an actual Halo weapon. It's kind of a fan in design of basically just a kit bash of the two separate guns. Um, I don't know why this was the decision made to add this versus the BR-85 itself, but it's fine. Um, you know, it's still kind of neat to have this weapon because it is close enough to the actual BR-85 or the Halo 4 5 version of the weapon. That if you actually like that version, it is cool to have it. It is a very large weapons platform too, so I don't really know what that's about. It's just, it's a very, very big weapon. You see it side by side with the uh, BR-45 or whatever. I can't remember what the other version uh, that they took from an ODST story and based the design off of that one. I can't remember which version of the battle rifle that was supposed to be, but you have a side-by-side -side of the two. Uh, then we have some work by uh, Freeman and Marstark continuing work on the uh, traffic cone. And of course it's a traffic cone. I've said this time and time again. I'm going to just keep repeating until the end of time, or at least until I quit doing these videos. And... This traffic cone, of course, is not going to be some game-changing thing. Uh, some people are going to scoff at something like this, but again, these traffic cones, companion cone textures aside, are really what add the atmosphere of uh, being in the Halo universe to Arma, and that's what really helps sell the immersion and stuff and makes it feel actually like you're playing something, you know, playing somewhere in Halo, just realistically, compared to playing with Halo assets in Arma. And so it's always nice to see 
stuff like that. That being said, let's go ahead and continue on to the Warthog. So, of course, the Warthogs have been in for a little bit now. Um, they are still very much development in progress. A lot of different things need to be done with them. In this case, we are seeing the Insurrectionist texture uh, for the Warthog. So, the Insurrectionists do have Warthogs in currently. Uh, but the textures are apparently placeholders. They were just basically plain black textures. They are getting uh, unique custom textures, different from what the UNSC has. And, you know, I don't know that this is like the most viable texture in every environment, but it is a cool texture. I dig it. Um, it's definitely something that's going to stand out from the UNSC and it doesn't look awful either. So I, I can get behind this. Then we have the Wombat. The Wombat was actually added to the dev build of Operation Trebuchet as well. Now, I actually don't have footage of this just because uh, controlling the Wombats with the UAV controls right now is very janky and it's leading to crashes, uh, crash to desktops, and some people have even said their like, entire computers have crashed. So I didn't want to do that. I just I wanted to not risk any crashes or issues. So we're just going to have to settle for the screenshot. There is three different versions. The standard recon version, a version with machine guns, and a version with rockets or missiles or whatever. I can't remember what's equipped with. I'm guessing missiles, but anyways, nonetheless, uh, it is very cool. I am excited to see the Wombat finally, after so long, get added into the game. Of course, I'm really, really anticipating the uh, crash to desktop issues, a, a huge thing that needs to be addressed. So I'm sure that'll get fixed as soon as possible. Uh, but nonetheless, really excited to see these things finally getting added in. Uh, so then we go into First Contact. And for First Contact, we have the Brute Spiker, which was actually just announced earlier today as of the recording of this video. And of course, the Brute Spiker has been worked on previously, and it's just something, unfortunately, that we have not gotten to actually see uh, implemented into the game just because the uh, the person who was working on the Brute Spiker previously, even though they actually finished it, they were waiting to finish uh, some additional work before releasing it to the public, and the other work never got finished, and then that person kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, so this one's from First MEU Euler. I don't know if that's pronouncing that name correctly, um, but he's the one who's designed the uh, Brute Spiker and is working on it currently. Still making changes and tweaks to the model as of right now. Um, I don't know when we might expect to see something like this, of course. Um, with Euler being somebody who's newer to the development team, I don't really know what his workflow is. Some people work very, very quickly. Some people can take weeks or even months. Uh, or longer to get content out. So I really don't know what the time frame we can expect this for. Um, but hopefully it shouldn't be too terribly long. Um, of course, I know that there's a lot of people who will probably be excited to see the uh, the spiker get added in. And uh, hopefully like Thomas or whoever else would potentially config it would uh, kind of front line it to get in sooner rather than later. But again... Um, that's all very up in the air, and I really couldn't say anything beyond that. But speaking of things I can say, as I mentioned earlier, uh, First Contact did have a uh, update. So the dev branch had an update for First Contact. Uh, the first thing it added was the anti-air version only of the Tyrant. Uh, so of course the Tyrant gun we've shown it off before, it's been in for a little bit, but now this anti-air variant will only engage aircraft. Uh, so if you want to have it active, still have it shooting at vehicles, but you don't want it just absolutely annihilating your convoy of warthogs, uh, you can now set it up for that. It will still engage aircraft, and as you guys can see in the clip, the most dangerous thing to these warthogs is not the tyrant gun, it's friendly fire from their own sparrowhawks. So that's still really awesome. I actually really, really like the fact that there is an AA-only version of this because it is supposed to be an anti-aircraft gun. Now they can fire at ground units, I believe, or at least... Uh, somewhere it says that, but they are designed as an anti-aircraft gun, and because they are so very powerful, um, it is nice to see that uh, tweak thrown in there for the sake of certain vehicles like the Warthog. But probably the biggest news of this video is that the Wraith tank is in the development build for First Contact. This is still a very work-in-progress uh, vehicle. Um, there is quite a few issues with it, especially in the current build of the dev branch. Some of those have already been addressed by the dev team and the uh, build just hasn't been updated yet. Uh, but things like the, uh, the commander view being the inside of the tank, for instance, is one that's currently in there. But nonetheless, this thing is still very cool. Um, it's 
powerful without being overpowered. Uh, it can destroy, you know, two, three Warthogs pretty easily, but it can still be killed itself depending on what angles the Warthogs come from. You know, the Warthogs can still get a drop on it and kill the tank before they get killed, so. Uh, a very powerful vehicle, but definitely, definitely possible to kill, you know, without too great of difficulty. It's, you know, it's a lot better balanced than the Tyrant Gun, in my opinion. It's really what it comes down to. So then we go into Community, and Community had a bunch of stuff to show off this week, and yeah, a lot of big stuff for Community. Uh, I may miss a couple things here. Hopefully I'll have caught everything from the Community end, and again, if I do miss anything, I do apologize, guys. But uh, starting us off, we have Zotafrius, who has shown off a uh, work-in-progress gas canister, which is based off of a very brief cutscene from Halo Wars. These are seen on the side of uh, Red Team's Warthog, and... Yeah, again, it's just a basic prop. Not going to be any game-changing stuff here, but just one of those little things to make it feel slightly more like the Halo universe. And uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. Probably a little bit more exciting for some of you guys, though, is that he has started work on a Halo Wars-inspired helmet. I say inspired, but this is actually... Well, it is Halo Wars-inspired, but this is actually based off of one of the Halo animes, which takes its design from Halo Wars, so it's kind of based off Halo Wars, kind of not... It's a, it's basically Halo Wars, but I guess a little bit more, uh, I don't know, exaggerated in certain respects, like the goggles and a few other areas. Uh, nonetheless, this is still a very cool piece of equipment. Um, he's still working on the model and everything, so it's probably still a long ways out. Um, obviously, config and stuff hasn't started for it yet, but nonetheless, you know, I'm still excited to see that thing get finalized. More armor is always welcome for the UNSC or Instructionist factions or whoever, you know, or you could just mix and match, and that's what really makes it nice in armor, is that you can really use this wherever you want. Then sticking on the topic of armor, we will switch over to Gamma, and uh, we see their JFO helmet, which has gotten a bit of an update and continued work in progress on it. Uh, of course, this is a unit-specific mod. This is not shared with the public, unfortunately. So in order to actually access this and be able to use these armors, you actually have to join Gamma. So I've kind of gotten a little bit mixed feelings showing this stuff off. But, you know, again, this is stuff being done by the community, and this stuff's always prone to change. This may reopen to the public. It might not. Um, but just want to put it out there for you guys to take a look at. And, you know, if you guys don't want to see content like that, I guess just let me know. But put it out there for you, and you guys can consume it. And then we've got another unit mod in the form of the 41st uh, ODST, and they've got a ODST combat knife they're working on putting into their mod that uses the improved uh, melee system. And uh, pretty cool stuff here. It's just a uh, pretty, it's fairly basic combat knife, really. It's just got the UNSC logo stamped on there. Um, I checked out the mod, and I haven't actually checked out the 41st mod previously, despite the fact that I've played with a lot of these people in the past. And it's a pretty cool mod. They've got a lot of other custom assets like Space Station that they've done for their uh, unit and things like that. It is open to the public. Uh, it is designed specifically for their unit, so everything might not work perfectly without like their specific mod pack. But it is still really cool. It is much appreciated that it's open to the public. Uh, they've got a few other custom assets like the, uh, the combat knife here, like a UNSC Saber and stuff that have the UNSC logo stamped onto it too, which is kind of neat. So if you're into that sort of thing, that might be a cool mod to check out. Probably the biggest community mod, however, that we have to talk about this week, and maybe just going forward over the next several months based off the other content they have in here, is the 12th Mountain Division. And the 12th has some really, really neat stuff here. They've got a ton of custom assets. And so I'm going to try and keep this brief still because this is already kind of a longer video because of all the stuff that came out this week. But basically, they've got custom backpacks, they've got custom weapons in the form of the CM-12 Confetti Maker, which is a light machine gun, uh, the RAS-24, which is a uh, rifle. Uh, both of those come in UNSC and Insurrectionist variant textures. Uh, they've also got, you know, custom backpacks, like I said, uh, which they have like half a dozen backpacks, maybe. I'm not sure. They've got, you know, unit-based retextures, which is kind of not even worth mentioning in these videos because there's so many of those, but... Uh, they've got unit-based retextures. They've got uh, the M... I, I can't remember the exact designation, but it's a law launcher system for uh, for the UNSC. So that's really neat. That's a really cool weapons platform. And uh, you guys might be able to see in the video. I can't see. Unfortunately, on my little preview screen, is I can't really make out the name of the actual weapon. So unfortunately, I can't remember it right offhand. 
Then they've developed and getting into like the really cool stuff. They've developed the uh, MQ-94 recon drone, which is based off the design scene in Halo Wars, which I believe is the MQ-96 recon drone. They're very similar in design, obviously. Uh, this is actually something that was getting developed for Operation Trebuchet. We haven't seen or heard anything on it in a while. I don't know if this thing's gone into development hell or whatever on the Optrade side of things or what happened to it, but this is still a very cool system. It works basically just like the standard little uh, drones that you'd carry around for UAVs for Arma. Uh, it's very, very maneuverable. Um, it's got different infrared, stuff like that, so it is a very, very cool system. And it just looks neat. But even cooler than that, then we have the Ravager, which is kind of a replacement for the Warthog. It comes in two flavors, armed and unarmed. The Ravager carries up to eight people on the unarmed variant, nine with the armed variant. Uh, that is four inside the cab of the vehicle and another four outside, as well as if there's the gun turret, then one guy on that, which is stationed or placed up on top of the cab of the vehicle. Uh, this is a very cool vehicle. It is smaller than the Warthog, despite the fact that it's got like more than double the capacity of the Warthog. So uh, it is a very, very efficient design compared to the Warthog. Um, it's not quite as high off the ground, so it's not quite as good as handling rugged terrain. Uh, but with that being said, it is still more than proficient at handling pretty much any terrain you're going to throw at it. I think it should be able to handle most of that pretty well fine. And then for me, we're going to wrap it up with my personally, well, at least what I personally find the most exciting thing from this week, which is the Nightingale helicopter. The Nightingale is, of course, from Halo Wars 2, if you guys are familiar with it. If you guys aren't familiar with it, it is basically a unit designed as a medical healing unit in Halo Wars. Now, in the case of actual Halo lore, this thing is basically a upscaled Falcon. Um, it's actually somewhere between a Falcon and a Pelican, so it's basically got two giant rotors as well as uh, thrusters on the back. Um, it's got a big cargo bay that opens up and comes down like the Pelican ramp. Uh, it does not have a mag lock for vehicles or anything like that. Um, it's a, about the same size as the Pelican, so honestly, realistically, if you're talking just from a pure proficiency standpoint, the Pelican probably makes more sense to take because it carries more people and can carry a vehicle. But talking from a lore perspective, again, we have a Halo lore vehicle. Uh, this makes great potential vehicle for insurrectionists or militia factions. I don't know if you guys are picking that up. Apparently it's like starting to like lightning and thunder outside pretty good. But yeah, this is just such a cool vehicle. I really am excited that this got added in. Um, this is probably the mo thing I'm actually most looking forward to personally talking about this week now again i'm really excited about the wraith tank the wraith tank is probably a lot cooler in a lot of ways it's just because it is so work in progress whereas this is pretty much ready to go as is right now and doesn't need any additional work um, for me this is a little bit more exciting to talk about this week at least once the wraith tank's completed and i can show off and you know have it look a little less janky and actually show off like some of the first person content and stuff from it and have that working properly um, you know, that'll be a different story at that point. But nonetheless, guys, that is the Operation Trebuchet News for this week. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys want to see more of this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, like always, guys, I want to know what you guys were most excited for from this week's video, and what you guys want to see the most from, uh, from all this Halo content and armor going forwards. Uh, let me know in the comments below, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.